Today's summary, dog barking 10 times, glass breaking 0 times, shots fired 5 times. Hello and welcome to my channel. Hardware AI. It's the second video of TinyML tutorial series, and today I will teach you how to train and deploy an audio sync classifier with wire terminal and edge impulse. But first, some background about audio signal processing. If you want to jump straight to action, by all means, skip to next section. Or not. I thought I already knew about sound processing, but while making this video, I found out quite a few new things myself. Sound is a vibration that propagates or travels as an acoustic wave through a transmission medium, such as a gas, liquid or a solid. The source of sound pushes the surrounding molecules. They push the molecules next to them and so on and so forth. When they reach other objects, that object also vibrates slightly. We use that principle in microphone. Microphone membrane gets pushed inward by the medium molecules and then back to its original position. That generates alternating current in the circuit, where voltage is proportional to sound amplitude. So basically, the louder the sound, the more it pushes membrane and the higher is generated uh, voltage. We then read this voltage with analog to digital converter and record it at equal intervals. The number of times we take measurement of sound in one second is called a sampling rate. For example, 8000 Hz sampling rate is taking measurement 8000 times for one second. Sampling rate obviously matters a lot for quality of the sound. If we sample too slow, we might miss important bits and pieces. The numbers used for recording sound digitally also matter. The larger range of a number used, the more nuances we can preserve from the original sound. This is called audio bit depth. You might have heard terms like 8-bit sound and 16-bit sound, well, it exactly what it says on the tin. For 8-bit sound, an unsigned 8-bit integers are used. For 16-bit sound, assigned 16-bit integers are used. All right, so in the end, we have string of numbers with large numbers corresponding to loud parts of the sound, and we can visualize that like this. We cannot do much with this raw sound representation though. Yes, we can cut and paste the parts of it to or make it quieter or louder, but for analyzing the sound, it is well too raw. Here is where Fourier transform, male scale, spectrograms, and Sepstrom coefficients come in. There is a lot of materials on the internet about Fourier transform. Personally, I really like this article from Better Explained and the video from 3 Blue 1 Brown. Check them out to find out more about Fourier transform. For purpose of this video, we'll define Fourier transform as a mathematical transform that allows us to decompose a signal into individual frequencies and the frequency's amplitude. Or, as it was put on Better Explained, Given the smoothie, it outputs the recipe. This is how our sound, our sound looks after applying Fourier transform. The higher bars correspond to larger amplitude frequencies. That's great! 
Now we can do more interesting things with audio signal. For example, eliminate the least important frequencies to compress the audio or remove the noise or maybe remove the sound of voice, etc. etc. But it is still not good enough for audio and speech recognition. First of all, by doing Fourier transform, we are losing all the time domain information, which is not good for non-periodic signals, such as human speech. We are smart cookies, though, and just take Fourier transform multiple times on signal sample, essentially slicing it and then stitching the data from multiple Fourier transforms together to form a spectrogram. Here, x-axis is the frequency, y-axis is the time, and the amplitude of frequency is expressed through a color. Brighter colors correspond to a larger amplitude. Very well. Can we do sound recognition now? No? Yes? Maybe. Normal spectrogram contains too much information if we only care about recognizing sounds that human ear can hear. Studies have shown that humans do not perceive frequencies on a linear scale. We are better at detecting differences in lower frequencies than higher frequencies. For example, we can easily tell the difference between 500 and 1000 Hz. But we will hardly be able to tell a difference between 10,000 and 10,500 Hz, even though the distances between these two pairs are the same. In 1937, Stevens, Walkman and Newman proposed a unit of pitch such as that equal distance in pitch sounded equally distant to the listener. This is called the Mel scale. We perform mathematical operation on frequencies to convert them to Mel scale. Mel scale basically places more importance on the frequencies that human ear can hear. To give a simplified explanation on what is that. There are more steps involved in recognizing speech. For example, sepstrom coefficients that I mentioned above. We will discuss them in later videos of the series. Now it's finally time to start with a practical implementation. In the last video of the series, we used data forward the tool of Edge Impulse CLI to gather the data. Unfortunately, we cannot do the same for audio signal since data forwarder has maximum signal frequency capped at 370 Hz, way too low for audio signal. Instead, download a new version of wire terminal edge impulse firmware with microphone support, which you can find on Seed Studio GitHub Seed Arduino Edge Impulse repository. You can just download this UF2 file, save it to your computer. And then connect the wire terminal to the computer. I have it connected and um, I need to disattach it from virtual machine. Although I could do it from virtual machine as well. And we can just simply copy this firmware to a new appeared device. called Arduino here. All right. After that, uh, create a new project on Edge Impulse platform. Let's press login button here. Actually already logged in. Here are all my projects and um, obviously you can name project whatever you want. Uh, I have four projects here for audio scene recognition. I'll go with MFE Convolutional 1D. And then go to Data Acquisition tab. Then launch Edge Impulse, Edge Impulse Daemon tool on the first on the first connection to my terminal. It will ask you to enter your account credentials and choose the project you're connecting to. But I already I already used it for data collection, so it will just automatically choose the correct project. Let's refresh. Okay, now we see the wire device and uh, sensor built-in microphone. 
frequency 8000 hertz uh, that's going to be improved in the future and maximum simple length for now is 3000 milliseconds. We have four classes of data and we'll record 10 samples for each class, 3000 milliseconds durations each. Uh, I'll be recording the sounds played from the laptop except for the background class which will be basically like people talking, uh, some music, um, sounds of cars and so on and so forth, whatever is not our main classes of interest. Um, if you have the opportunity to record real sounds, that would be even better. If you have a dog, then you can make it bark at home and then record the sounds. Um, all right, so basically what I do here is that I will open a new YouTube tab or just type, uh, let's say, barking sound on Google. Now I go to videos and I'll open this angry dogs barking. Press the play button. Great, we have dogs barking. So just press the start sampling button. Okay, let's let's let let's 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 stop let's stop with barking. Uh, we just recorded one three second sample and let's listen to it. The sound quality is not perfect, obviously, but it will do for the task. Um, now we will just going to repeat the same process. So we have, uh, as I mentioned, 10 samples for each class, the same way. Uh, and after you have these samples, you can press on split sample. Actually, not that you can, you must, you have to do it and then choose the correct segments because we don't really want to have uh, for example silent segments or segments with other sounds uh, for barking class label right so we just need to make sure that we only have barking in under barking label and only gunshots and maybe some periods of silence short periods of silence uh, for gunshots label and so on and so forth Let's listen to them. All right, that's three segments and they actually all very good. So we'll just press split. Oh, and I actually had gunshots label on this. Okay, that's not right. I need to edit the label. Barking. Well, 40 samples is abysmally small as far as deep learning data sets go. So we're also going to upload some data. What I did is I simply downloaded the sounds from this videos from YouTube. You can choose whatever software you like uh, for doing that. I have option to download MP4A sounds at 128 bits per second. Uh, and then after downloading, I resample, I resample uh, these files to match the 8000 hertz frequency and also save them in WAV format. So I have really uh, simple script that uses Librosa library. Uh, basically, I just enter. Let me stop this process. Sure, I think I have to open in another window. Yes, uh, basically I just enter Python convert to Py, the name of the file that I need to convert and the name of the output file and it converts it to 8000 Hz frequency, resamples it. Um, after you have these files, you can upload them. You can just press and show options and then go to upload data, go to upload there, then choose your file. I'm going to choose, uh, for example, this uh, barking one again. Put in training data set and enter the label barking. Then begin upload. 
Okay, we have the upload completed. Let's go back to data acquisition tab. And then here we have that file, which is really, really long. And you'll need to split it, split sample. It will, uh, Edge Impulse automatically will choose all the pieces, the interesting pieces of that large sound file. So you just need to press split and confirm your selection. I'm not going to do it here because I already have that barking one file, already have split into multiple samples. So I'm just going to delete it for now. So all in all, I have nine minutes, 43 seconds of audio collected, which includes both audio collected with wire terminal microphone and samples downloaded and converted from the internet. It's still smallish, but workable. Um, so let's go to create impulse tab. Uh, we're going to choose window size 1000 milliseconds, window increase 500 milliseconds. Uh, and for pre-processing, let's start with male frequency energy banks. Among the processing blocks, we see three familiar options, namely raw data, spectral analysis, which is essentially Fourier transform of the signal, spectrogram, and MFE, or male frequency energy banks which correspond to four stages of audio processing I described earlier. That's convenient. If you like experimenting, you can try using all of them on your data, except for maybe raw, which will have too much data for our smallish neural network. I'll just go with the best option for this test, which is MFE or male frequency energy banks right here. It is not marked as recommended, but we do have a non-voice audio. Um, and um, as you'll see later, after experiments, that it performs on non-voice audio better than MFCC. I already have MFE chosen, so I go to MFE. And then we can see this is one sample of raw data, gunshots. The raw feature is here. I can see this is data from, from wire terminal microphone. And this is how the gunshot looks after male frequency scale processing. And processing time is, is actually quite large, it's 300 milliseconds. So you, you press on save parameters and then generate features. All right, so after the features have been generated, we can go to the learning block, which is a neural network classifier. Um, so we have basically two standard choices is 1D convolutional neural network and a neural network with 1D convolutions and a neural network with 2D convolution. Both will work, but if possible, we should always go for smaller models since we want to deploy it to an embedded device. I ran four different experiments, one, one deconvolution and two deconvolutional networks with MFE and MFCC features as inputs. And the results for them are the following. The best model, after all, was one deconvolution network. Um, basically, it's just a standard architecture from here. I just reduced the dropout slightly after the first convolutional layer. Uh, Dropout is helpful, but too much dropout is bad because essentially you're lobotomizing your neural network. <laughs> Two MFCC network features networks, they do not perform that well. They have lower accuracy and especially bad at distinguishing background. I remind you, background has a lot of people talking things um, and it often confuses it with barking and other classes. Basically, as we will talk in later videos of series, MFCC uh, is specifically for human speech recognition. Um, so it only preserves the frequencies that are present in human speech. So that is probably what is affecting the accuracy here. Um, it also greatly affects the number of features output by the processing blocks. So as you see for MFCC, we have slightly over 600 features, and for MFE, we have more than 3,000 features. So MFE, or male filter energy banks, they preserve more information about frequencies.
including those which are not present in human speech, which is obviously better if what we are trying to classify is not human speech. So the highest accuracy score we have so far is 75.4% uh, uh, and that is with male frequency energy banks and convolutional 1D network. Um, we can see that it's actually pretty precise at determining the background or no sounds of interest. Um, sometimes it confuses with barking. Um, barking accuracy is also good. But now we do have a lot of confusion of gunshots with glass breaking and glass breaking with other classes. Actually, if you listen to some of these samples of glass breaking, they do have these, uh, this loud, loud sound of exploding glass in the beginning, which can be confused with a gunshot. That can be remedied by cleaning the data better and assembling more samples of gunshots and glass breaking sounds. And also we can clean it, we, we can make it better on post-processing step where we will average the model predictions. After we have our model and more or less satisfied with its accuracy in training, we can test it on a new data in live classification mode. All right, we set the sample links to 3000 and let's turn those angry dog sounds again. and we definitely have five instances of barking which is very precise and very nice let's listen to the sample okay let's actually do it this way Okay, um, now let's try background, which is basically nothing or me talking. Okay, we have five instances of background, which is very nice and very precise. And then we can download our model and example files by going to deployment tab and choosing Arduino library. And then make sure you have the Eon compile enabled, then press on build. Then you'll be able to download the Arduino library, which has your model inside of it. Then copy this folder to your Arduino libraries folder, launch the Arduino ID, and let's have a look at the code. Go to examples, libraries examples, and that one is called uh, name of your project, and then inference. I'm going to choose Nana BLE 33 cents microfilm. And let's have a look. Um, the, this example is based on Arduino Nana 33 BLE and uses PC, PDM library because why terminal relatively simple microphone circuit and to keep things really simple this time in our code as you can see here uh, we're going to use analog read function and delay microseconds for timing microphone inference record function here A uh, large disclaimer here, this is not the way how to properly do sound recording. Normally we would use interrupts to time the audio sampling, but interrupts is a large topic by itself and I want you to finish the video before you get old. So we'll leave that together with MFCC explanation for later video about speech recognition. In the main loop, we run the inference with the classifier model we have 
and predict and, and print out the predictions. Let's try uploading this. All right, and let's try testing and seeing the results on the terminal. We can see most of the time right now when I'm talking, it's a background class, which is correct. If it's complete silence, the probability of background is very high. If it's just me talking, then most of the time it's above 60 or 50. Now let's try playing some gunshot sounds. and maybe some sounds of dog barking. And finally, what about that glass breaking? Breaking sound. I could break some glass, but I really, I really don't want to break my cup here. Well, it works pretty good, except for glass breaking. I think it needs some work on that category of sound, but it is very largely unpractical. I mean, if you can see the screen of your computer, then you probably can hear the sound yourself. Since why terminal can connect to the internet, we can take this simple demo and make it into a real IoT application with Blink. Blink is the platform that allows you to quickly build interfaces for controlling and monitoring your hardware projects for your iOS and Android devices. In this case, we will use Blink to push notification to our phone if Y terminal detects any sounds we should worry about. You can read about that in Seed Studio Wiki, basically downloading the app. Then click on New Project, uh, then you choose uh, Arduino Uno's device, choose Wi-Fi, create project, and then uh, we will need to add push notification element and press the play button. Remember, pressing the play button is really important. Now for wire terminal, we will need to install Seed Arduino RPC Wi-Fi. Basically, you can just follow the overview for wire terminal network installation. You'll need to install the Seed Arduino RPC Wi-Fi, Seed Arduino RPC Unified, uh, Embed TLS, and uh, Seed Arduino FS or file system. Then you can try Blink with simple push button example, which you can find uh, in this video's repository on GitHub. Basically what it does is upon pressing a top left button on the wire terminal, it sends a push notification to your phone. And then if that works, then Blink test is successful and then you can move to the next stage. Now for our, for our AIoT application, which I have here, we're going to move all the neural network inference code in a separate function, which we're going to, which we're going to call infer. Uh, and we're going to call this function in the loop before Blink, uh, after Blink run. Uh, similar to what we did before, we check, we, we, we check the neural network prediction probabilities if, and if they are above the threshold for classes of interest, we send the notification to your connected mobile device. All right, let's compile and try it out. As you see, we immediately receive notification about dogs barking because this is one of the best classes we have so far in the model, uh, accuracy-wise. And let's try gunshots. Uh, 
That's definitely shots fired. And voila, we have our own working machine learning on the edge IoT application that can be used to warn people about dangerous situations. There are a few things that can be and will be improved. For example, continuous sound sampling for inference, so we wouldn't skip or miss any, any sounds. And also increasing the sampling rate to improve the sound quality. You're welcome to try it on your own set of sounds. And if you do, please post in the comments to the video or the article. I hope this video was useful for you. Stay tuned for more videos. Until the next time.